hope your guitar is looking good. Let's add a bit more detail. Once again, in the layers panel, I'm going to switch on the guitar and I'd like to do one of these F holes on the guitar as well. So I'm going to zoom right in. This time, I'll use my zoom tool and just click and drag right the way down to that hole over there. So it's just another way of zooming in and out rather than using the keyboard. I will still hold down the space bar and pull that up. So if I want to do this shape, once again, I could try using the curvature tool. I could go back to the pen tool and I think that's the way I will do it. So with the pen tool, I'm going to click and I'm going to click and drag to make a curve. I'm going to go up to here, click and drag to get another curve in there. I can see how it's trying to curve around. So I think I'll just go over there, click and drag a little bit and click at that point. And then here I can click and drag my curve right out. Remember, if you want to get rid of the handle, because it's not going to go where you want it to, you can then just click on that point. Same again. I can just go in here and click and drag and do the same thing again. Click and drag. I think I can get that all the way around to there. It doesn't matter if it's not quite right. We can always, always fix it with the white arrow tool. But from this point, I need that to be a corner point. So I'll click once on that to remove the second handle. I'll go back to my beginning and pull my curve out. Use the white arrow tool to select the points that you want to change and you can then just adjust them with the handles until they look exactly as you need them. Feel free to do any other details. I'm keeping mine quite simple. I think I'll do that detail there. And then I might do this scratch plate over here as well. So once again, I will use the pen tool to click. And I think I'm going to do a curve there, a curve up to there, curve around to here. We don't have to do every single detail. We just want the look of the details in there. Now that I've done that, I'm going to zoom right out and I'm going to hide the photo. So I'd like to actually split my guitar in half. And the reason I'm doing that is I want half of the guitar to be one color and the other half to be a different color. So I'm going to click on the guitar and I'm going to go and I'm going to use my knife tool. So remember, the, the knife tool allows you to either click and you could split it up like so. I'll control Z to undo that. Or if you hold down the Alt key first, you can click and drag across a shape to cut it directly in two. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm going to start right at the top. Remember, the Alt key is also called the Option key. So I can click over there, holding down the Alt key, I can go right the way down to the bottom and I'm going to just chop the guitar in two like that. So I'm going to have different colors at the top and the bottom. Once again, this is a slightly shorter section. I'm going to just stop so you can try it out. So I hope your guitar is looking good so far. You've got some details in there. You've managed to cut it up okay. I want to add some color to my guitar. I'm just going to deselect it and I'm going to go to the window menu and find my swatches. So the swatches are the same colors that you've probably seen already in the properties when we've been choosing fills and strokes. But there are some other sets of colors that we can work from and these come with Illustrator They're in the libraries. The easiest way to get to the library is down the bottom here in the swatches. If you click on this little button, it kind of looks like some books, um, the uh, edge of the books standing up. Click on there and there's all sorts of different libraries in here for colors and patterns and gradients. I'm going to go to the art history set and I particularly like these sets in here. It's called Impressionism. And there's a whole different set of colors in here that I could choose from. Now, by all means, have a look at all the different ones and see what, what you get. But I'm going to choose this set right at the bottom here. 
And I'm gonna grab it by the folder and just drag the folder into my working document here. So now it's part of this swatch set for this document. That's really important. If you do a new document, that will disappear. So I've now got those colors. Let me start to select the guitar and I'm selecting half of it. I'm going to go to my fill color. You can see there's those colors there and I'm going to fill half it with one color and the other one, the other half with another color. No. I think I will take the scratch plate and I'll make that the same color as that one and the F hole, I'll select that and make that the same color as the lighter area. And I'm going to select all of those shapes now and go to my stroke and just say none. So I don't want a stroke, I just want this as a shape. Now I'm going to scale the guitar up. So I'm zooming out. I'm going to use the direct selection tool, sorry, the selection tool, the black arrow tool. And I'm going to select the whole of the artwork. Bear in mind, I have hidden my photo of the guitar. I'm finished with, with that now. And I'm going to rotate this slightly. So I'm going to click just off the edge to rotate it. Let's undo that. If you just click over here, this is your scaling. But if you go just a little bit out, you can then click and drag to rotate. And I'm kind of aiming this guitar very roughly, just edge to edge on the page. Now I want to scale it up. So I'm going to click over here. And if I scale it, you can see how it misscales completely. So if I hold down the shift key, then I can scale it proportionately. So I do want this to be quite large over there. What I'm really looking at here is to maybe have some of the guitar cut off at the bottom and maybe the head slightly cut off at the top. Now, what is obviously missing on this guitar, apart from strings and countless other things, are some of the little um, uh, tuners along the top. So let's zoom into that area. So I'm going to make three little tuners here and to do that, I'm going to use the pencil. And I'm just going to create one little tuner shape here. Let's give that some color as well. So I'll go to my fill and I'll make that the same color as that. It does look a little bit rough. Everything else is so stylized that really does look rough. So I'm going to go to the object menu. <coughs> I'm going to go down to path and I'm going to choose simplify. And over here, if I push this over to the left, you can see how it can simplify the shape slightly. I think that's about right. I'm happy with that. Now I want three of those. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and make a copy. Rotate this one slightly. Hold down the Alt key, make another copy and rotate that one slightly as well. You can make whatever shapes you like here. Of course, I do need to attach them to the guitar. So I will use a little rectangle and same again, put it into the right position, rotate it, hold down the Alt key and copy it. Once again, you might need to rotate that a bit make another copy and rotate that into position. Now I could leave these shapes exactly as they are, but what I'd like to do instead, I think is to select all those shapes. I'm only selecting this part of the guitar here, not the lighter part, the other, uh, the other half, just this part of the guitar, plus those shapes, plus those little circles. And I'm going to use my shape builder tool to unite them into one shape. So I just paint all of this across there and there and then touch all of those. And now they all become one shape in there. Let's zoom right out to see the, the result. Okay, that's looking good, but we need some more details. Now, I seem to have lost the F hole. Where's that gone? Well, when I made these into sort of one shape, 
it changed the stacking order. The F hole is still there, but it's underneath the guitar. Now, there are two ways to work in Illustrator. You can either work in this mode here where you see all your artwork in preview mode, how it will print out. Or if you go to the view menu, you can view it in outline mode. There we go. You can see the F hole is still there. If I select it now, I'll just go back to preview mode. And I'm going to go to the object menu to arrange and I'm going to bring it to the front so it'll change the stacking order and move it above the other items. There we go. It's back and looking quite good now. Because these objects are all linked together to that one, if I want to move everything around, as long as I select these two plus those two, I can move the whole thing around a bit. I might just move it down a little bit like so. Now, I think I'd also like some other shapes in here as well. So I'm going to use my rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag in a large rectangle and I'm going to rotate it around roughly to the same angle as the guitar. Something like that. And I'm going to go to object, arrange, and I'm going to send that to the back. So it'll go behind the guitar. So that's for this section here. I want another one for down here. So I'll hold down the Alt key and I'll make a copy of that. I can see because it's the same color, you're not going to see the bottom of the guitar. So I'm going to choose that other green, the darker green that I had. There we go. Let's lock everything down. So I'm going to select everything. So all of these items, select them all. And I can either go to my layers and I can actually lock them in there or it's much easier I can go to the object menu and choose lock selection they all lock down so before we start to put our text in let me go up to the view menu and just view this in trim view that will show the final printed poster that's looking great I just need some text in here before it goes off to the printers so I will use the type tool. Now, there are two ways to work with type. You can either click and drag to make a text box or the way that I'm about to do it now, I'm just going to click once. There is a whole section in this tutorial about using the type tool. Um, if you have a look at that, if you're not sure about the type, but we're just going to do it quite simply. So I'm just going to click once. And it pops in a bit of lorem ipsum text in there. That really doesn't matter. I'll go across to the properties and you can see the properties have changed now to show my character options. I'm going to make this type a whole lot bigger. I'll put in the words that I want to use. So I want this to be a type, um, a poster for a folk festival in the park. So I'm going to say folk. And let me do a return there and let's say fest. Now I'll select all the type by clicking and dragging over it and we'll make it a bit bigger and then I'll go and choose an appropriate typeface. Now I'm looking for something which shouts out folk fest and I kind of like this hand-drawn sort of look. You can still make your type bigger, even though that only goes up to 72 in there. You can actually make your type bigger like so, or you can use your selection tool and you can then click and drag, but do hold down the shift key. Otherwise you'll miss scale it. Click and drag that out to get it to the size that you want. So I'm after something like so. To change the color of the type, go along to the fill, and I'm going to pick that green over there. This looks more forest than uh, than folk, but um, we'll try some white. No, I definitely like that, that light green color. And then I can put the details at the bottom about the festival. So I'm just going to use my type tool once again and just click in here. That's coming quite large this time, so I'm going to make it a whole lot smaller. And I'm going to choose a very simple typeface in here. So this will be the details about the festival. I'm 
Right, I've got my type in there. I'm going to select the type. And once again, I'm going to change the color so it's more readable. I might make it white. And down in the paragraph options, I'm going to choose right aligned or line right, and then use the arrow, the black arrow, the selection tool to move it across in there. Right, we're nearly done. To save this out, we're going to do it in two ways. First of all, file and save as, and we're going to save it as an Adobe AI, an Illustrator file. We'll call it Folk Poster in there. And I'm going to click on Save. That's my working file. Let's click OK over here. It's just come up with a version of Illustrator. Up the top, we'll click OK. So that's my working file. But I'd now like to send a PDF to the printer. So I'm going to go to File and save as over here i usually put my name in here as well if i'm sending to the printer just in case it gets lost so i'm gonna say tim wilson folk poster and in here i'm going to choose pdf so let's click on save in there now a, a window will appear any second and i'm going to choose from along the top these are the pdf options high quality print I'm going to leave Preserve Illustrator editing capabilities switched on in case I do need to edit this file. And then down here, I'm going to go to Marks and Bleeds because what the printer will require is the bleed setting. So I'm going to say use the document bleed setting and switch on the bleed. And I'm also going to just choose use all printers marks in there. It's more than the printer probably needs, but I'm sure they won't have a problem with that. Let's click Save PDF. And now that's saved, let's have a look at it. If I open up the file, and this is opening up in Acrobat, but you can even view it in a browser, you can see I've got all of my printer's marks around the outside. Let's zoom out a little bit over here. So you can see there's details up the top with the file name. There's where the file is going to be cropped by the guillotine. There's an extra area for the bleed. And we've got color um, bars and black and white bars around the side. Everything the printer needs to print you an amazing poster. Anyway, there's quite a lot in there. Watch a little bit. Stop. Try it out. Do some more. Stop. Try it out. And have, have some fun. Do a few different types of posters. If you don't like guitars, Try something else. Anyway, find a subject that you enjoy and make a poster. I'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed the project. Remember, there are tons more in our Udemy course with a lot of training as well, over 12 hours. And the link is down in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to get lots more of this sort of training from us.